All right, guys, what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to use a blind bearing puller to be able to take this bearing out. I don't know if you can hear this on the camera here, but I have to see if you'll be able to. That one's pretty rough. If you check like another bearing, it's real smooth, rolls real nice, and this hasn't even been cleaned yet. So we want to get that out, but we've got a retainer in here that's retaining that bearing. If you guys look at all your different engine cases, you're going to see how these bearings are held or retained in place so that they can't uh, come loose and walk up onto a shaft. It's going to be important. It's not only just an interference fit that's retained. So just make life a little easier. I'm going to heat this up. Would you agree with me that this re uh, bolt retaining the bearings can have Loctite? Yes. Dang right. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it heated up here for a second. Did you guys return that temp gun yesterday? Yeah. Back Why don't you go ahead and grab that? Where that is. Okay. 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 Now I've shown you guys a few different times that when we go ahead and uh, use our impact tool here, what do we always do with the tool first? Right. This one fits really good. I don't think there's going to be a problem. I always say that I like to try and see if I can get it done by hand before I beat on. I'm using this tool all the time, aren't I? How, of, of the number of ratios this year, how many times have I hit it with the hammer? A couple out of, out of grabbing the tool like 10 times, right? You seem to be able to get a lot more leverage on that than you do a regular screwdriver too. Yep. I love this tool. I love this tool. So the other thing I want you to notice about this, what do we call that type of fastener? Yeah. Countersunk. Okay. So we have the plate that has to match that countersink. If we put that on upside down or whatnot, see how much that bolt sticks up? If you can see that in the video there. Okay, so that's something to just keep in mind. When we go to put that back together, what are we going to do with the threads? Clean them. Clean them. Get good contact cleaner on there. Dry, clean the bolt, contact cleaner on the bolt, apply our Loctite, and we're going to be able to, uh, to do a good job there. So next thing uh, we have here, this tool is absolutely amazing. It's called a blind bearing puller. What's going to happen is we're going to find the appropriate size adapter. We're going to stick it down through the bearing. And when we tighten this up, these, these fingers on here are going to expand and they're going to grab underneath the bearing. And then we have a slide puller and we're going to pop that bearing out in no time at all. This particular one here, we could actually drive from this side. We could drive it out. And just for demonstration purposes, I am going to use the slide hammer to remove it. So I've got my retainer removed. I should be able to slide this in. What do you think we always want to put on this? Some grease. So I'll use some assembly glue for right now. And then uh, when I snug this down, what you're going to see, let's see if you can catch this in the video. There's a point inside of here, and it's on a taper. And that's what expands those fingers out. Can, can you guys actually see the gap getting wider and it's spreading here? Real simple design, easy to use. Um, but even though I'm going to use the blind bearing puller, one thing I like to do is use some heat. I'm going to go ahead and get the case probably 150 degrees or so to be able to allow this slide hammer to not have to work very hard. Does somebody mind grabbing me the grease out of the uh, cabinet here? Because it might be locked if it's back in that brown one. Maybe that master lock key. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Okay, we've went ahead and installed a uh, slide hammer in place. Once again, we just tighten this down. The reason it's nice to do this bearing is I'm going to show you guys how it actually expands and grabs that inside race. Can you see that now? Now, hence the name of this tool is called a blind bearing puller. So what's great about this is I can pull uh, bearings like this that I can't get through the other side. So I can get underneath it. There's enough clearance into the housing of the engine case, I can expand that out, grab onto the back side of the bearing, and then you're going to see the slide hammer this apart. I'm going to talk about where to get that in a little bit too. Now, I'll see if I can do this by myself. If I'm struggling real bad, I would use some more heat and ask for some help. It's I could use a little more heat. Can you actually see how I'm just about ready to pop? Pretty sweet. What did I just do to this bearing by removing it that way? I ruined it because what's happened is I'm pulling on that inside race and then we have the bulls. You guys remember from the video we watched on YouTube and you have the outside race that's being held in. By me driving it out that way, I for sure have ruined this bearing. It could not be reused. Okay. When we install a bearing, 
into, if we, if the bearing is being installed into a case, what part of the bearing do we push on? The outside or the inside? The outside. If we're installing a bearing around a shaft, what part of the bearing do we push on? The inside race, okay? Otherwise, we're just playing in a So that's pretty cool. Uh, I only got to about 125 degrees for heat. I would go ahead and clean my case really good, and that's all there is to, uh, to actually removing the bearing. Some of you I noticed probably want to know where to get this. I do not have stock in Harbor Freight, but I seem to oh. like these. This uh, kit right here, you recognize that Pittsburgh brand? I bought this, no kidding, at Harbor Freight for $30, this whole kit. This kit, through most of our parts book in the power sports industry, is around 200 and some dollars. I've seen some companies out there, magazines, selling this same exact kit uh, for around 100 bucks, $29.99 at Harbor Freight. And uh, if anything, you think about what you're gaining, you're also gaining a little slide hammer too. You'll see some different tools that I've made over the years. One of my favorite, let's see if I can find it quick. It's probably back, back at my house. Is I've, uh, I took and welded a couple nuts on a pair of vice grips. And then I actually can vice grip something and then slide hammer it off. And the nuts that I welded, uh, actually, in the, the bolt that I welded on there is the same size as my slide hammer, so I could take my vice grip and thread it into this, and then slide hammer something off. So there's a couple options, and that's how you do it without hurting anything.